Hello class. This is the video solutions for lab 1718. Uh, the first problem we are tasked with solving uh, the system of equations by any method, uh, substitution or addition method. Uh, remember the addition method is the same as the elimination method. Uh, so sometimes we refer to it as addition method, sometimes we will call it the elimination method. So any method works. Uh, in this first problem you'll notice the uh, author of this lab decided to multiply the top equation by 3 and the reason why they chose 3 was to create opposite coefficients with the y right by multiplying the top equation by 3 you see you end up with the 3 times 3 is 9x 3 times negative y is negative 3y and 3 times negative 5 is negative 15 by doing that the y's are going to cancel when we add the two equations together we're effectively going to eliminate the y variable Right, because when I add these two equations together, well, 9 and 2 is 11, right? Don't forget about the x. This becomes 0, and we have negative 11. Divide by 11, and you end up with x equals negative 1. So remember, that's half of the answer, right? x equals negative 1 is the first part. Now we have to find the y coordinate. So you can take this negative 1, and you can substitute in for x, either here, here. You could substitute this negative 1 in over here or here. It doesn't matter where you do it. Okay, so we take the negative 1 and we sub it into this first equation. So 3 times negative 1 minus y equals negative 5. When we clean this up, you end up with y equals positive 2. So the ordered pair is negative 1 comma 2. Now, to set, check our results, if I take the negative 1 and put it in for x and the positive 2 and put it in for y, I should get negative 5. And you'll see 3 times negative 1 minus the 2 results in negative 5. So it worked. And then if I take the negative 1 and the 2 and I substitute them into this equation, uh, we end up with 4, right? 2 times negative 1 plus uh, 3 times uh, 2 does result in 4. Okay, so the check works. Problem 2, we can still use the addition or eliminate, uh, elimination method, but it looks like since this problem is already solved for y, we use substitution. All right, so if I know y equals 3x plus 2, I can take this 3x plus 2 and replace the y with 3x plus 2. All right, so instead of 2x minus 3y, I write 2x minus 3 times what y is equal to, which is the 3x plus 2. Now you do the algebra, right? You're going to distribute the negative 3, and when you clean up the math, don't, don't, don't be afraid of the, the decimal point or fractions. Okay, uh, we clean up the algebra and you end up with x equals negative 2.5. Okay, so the x coordinate is negative 2.5. I replace the x with negative 2.5, right? So if I'm trying to find y, we know y equals 3 times x, but I already told you x is negative 2.5. So we can say y equals 3 times negative 2.5 plus 2. And you end up with y equals negative 5.5. Okay, so here are, this is my ordered pair. And the check would be uh, simply to replace the y with the negative 5.5 and the x with the negative 2.5. And you end up with negative 5.5 equals negative 5.5. Right, so the second problem was done via substitution. The last problem uh, looks like we're going to use the elimination method or the addition method again. Um, if you look, I have a 12x here and a negative 6x. So if I multiply the top equation by 2, you're going to have a negative 12x and a positive 12x, and they're going to eliminate when I add the two equations together. All right? So people always ask me, why did I pick 2? Well, 2 is the simplest way to get opposite coefficients, negative 12 and 12. You could have multiplied the top equation by positive 4 to get 12y and positive 3 to get negative 12y and the y's would cancel. Um, but this way, you only have to multiply one equation. Okay. Again, when we clean up the uh, algebra here, you, you end up with y equals 25. Okay. So if I know y equals 25, I can replace either of these y's with 25. And when you do that, you end up with x equals 9. So the answer is 9 comma 25. And then the check is down here. Okay. On my test, I'm not going to require you to show the check. If you have extra time, wonderful. You can show me the check.
next problem, we have Alan and Bob. They're in two separate cars. Um, so we take a look, and it looks like Alan is driving at 55 miles per hour. So his rate, or slope, is the 55 miles per hour, and his initial distance from home is 24 miles. So the B is the 24, the M is the 55, right? Y equals MX plus B. In this case, they use D for Y and T for time. That's our first equation. Then we have Bob, right? Looks like Bob, he's driving at 62 miles an hour, so the slope is 62, right? Because the slope represents a rate, so the rate of speed is 62 miles per hour. Initial distance from home is eight and a quarter, right? 8.25 miles. So we have two equations. So we could solve this by substitution, right? If D equals everything I'm circling here, I could take this and put it into D, solve for T, and, and I can actually solve this system. But they ask us to graph. Now the window is a little tricky here, right? So in my calculator, you're gonna enter D equals 55T plus 24 as Y1. You're going to enter uh, 62t plus 8.25 as y2. Now, listen, your calculator doesn't have d and t, so just use y and x, right? y and x. When I enter that into my calculator, the window's rough, right? When you first do the sketch, um, you might not see anything. So here's the window that I would recommend you use. Now, you might say, well, why did we pick 0 to 5 for x max? Well, think about it. If, if this represents how long you're in the car. How many hours are you gonna be in the car? I've seen students put in 100 hours or 1,000 hours. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Are you gonna really drive for 100 hours? You know, my longest car ride's two, three hours at most. So maybe zero to five is appropriate. When you think about the equations for y, well, how far will you go? If I substitute a two in for time, two hours, that's 110 plus 24. So my y max has to be bigger than 110. What if I'm in the car for five hours, right? Then my distance would be 55 times five plus 24. So our rough check is, you know, 50 times five is, is uh, 250. So, you know, you're gonna want your, your Y max to be, you know, a few hundred miles. Once we graph this in our calculator, you remember you're gonna press second trace um, number five for intersection and you'll end up with this point. So let me open my calculator and just show you quickly. So again, uh, I enter my two equations, right? the 55x plus 24, 62x plus 8.25. Now notice my plot one is on. So again, it's possible I was doing a scatter plot previously. So you make sure you turn your plot one off if it's on. Right? There should be no black box above your plot one, two, and three. Uh, here is my window. The y scale just means I'm counting in increments of 50. Right, so I won't see 350 tick marks. Uh, I'll count by 50s. When I go from 0 to 5, yeah, you'll see 5 tick marks, right? Because I'm counting by 1s. I first graph, first curve, second curve. To get the intersection, I press second, trace, number 5 for intersection. There's only two curves, so when it says first curve, I can just quickly press enter. Second curve, I press enter. Guess where do I think the intersection is? I press enter. And let's see what we have here. Oh, I think I entered something incorrectly. Aha! The problem was 55x and I entered 52x. That's a problem. All right, now I fixed it, right? 55x plus 24. I had 52. Sorry about that. I press graph. First curve. Second curve, I press uh, second, trace, number five for intersection, enter, 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 and the intersection occurs at 2.25 comma 147.75. So what does this mean, right? They're gonna ask you, what's the practical meaning of this point? Well, after 2.2 hours, uh, both Bob and Alan will be 146.7 uh, miles away from home. Okay. Right. And it looks like they had some kind of rounding issue, right? Because we get exactly 2.25 comma 147.75, right? So again, the practical meaning should be at 2.25 hours, they are both 147.75 miles from home. And that should do it.
Uh, I'm going to create another video, part two, to answer the last page of this lab. Thank you for watching.